Hey guys, in this video we're going to be making a patch from scratch in Native Instruments new Massive X synthesizer. So the patch I'm going to make is going to sound something like this. So kind of a plucky, distorted, vocally type of patch, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is initialize the patch. So you go to Quick Start and then you pick this Massive X blank. So when you pick this patch here, you're not actually going to hear anything when you play because there's no routing. So if you're not familiar with Massive, just a quick tour. At the top here, you have all the audio-based controls, and at the bottom, you have all the modulation, including LFOs, envelopes, this performer, and you have filters here, and then you have this whole routing section down here, which you get this little kind of patch cable interface similar to Reactor. So the reason we're not hearing anything is because nothing is patched in, so to hear a simple sound, you just have to route oscillator 1 to the output section here. So now you can hear the oscillator. So then up here we have a whole slew of wavetables to choose from, including categories and subcategories. So we can just browse around. We have formant ones which are more kind of vocal stimulations. And all of these sound very basic at the beginning because we're only listening to one slice of the wavetable. So later when we add modulation, you're going to hear the more of the effect of it. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Let's assign LFO 4 here to the wavetable position. So the way to do that is you drag this little box or you can just click on it once and then click on the destination. So you have these boxes below every parameter. So if I want to assign it here, just click here and then you click and drag to set how much you want it to modulate. So now LFO 4 will sweep through the wavetable. So you can control this right here. And then you have the wave to pick here. So we can pick something like a sine wave to begin with. So now as we switch to tables, we're going to get a better sense for the character of the entire wavetable as it's sweeping. So now you can hear more of those vocal effects in the foreman section. Well, let's pick this one to start with. I'm just going to set a slow LFO modulation and then let's go to the envelope, envelope section. So the amp envelope is predefined here to envelope 1. So we can make it more of a plucky sound by reducing the sustain and decay. I can also assign the second envelope to control the position in the wavetable as well. And then here you have different ways of scanning the wavetable. So this also contributes to the overall timbre. And for each of those you have two different controls that change every time. So there's tons of different possibilities for timbre control. Because even these ones, you have two different parameters that you can assign to all these different modulation sources. So for example, let's assign this performer one to the formant control here. And then we can draw some shapes in here. Let's gonna reduce the loop here. The other thing we can do is we have these insert effects here. So we can add, for example, a bit crusher. And again, to route this, you go back to the routing section. And then whenever you select something out of these options here, it, it changes the text here. So you can see the module, the corresponding module down here. So for example, this F section here, you have a bunch of different filters. And if you pick a filter, then this F section, you can see it reflected here. And then you can patch it up like you would standard patch cables in like a modular, for example. So for this bit crusher here, we have a wire going from oscillator 1 directly to the outputs here. So to remove a wire, you can just double click on the wire or on the module itself. So then let's route oscillator 1 through this bit crusher first. And then we're going to go to the output here. So then oscillator 2 right now, we're not using it. So we can patch that into the output as well and bring up the volume. So this one, again, we can pick a completely different uh, wavetable here. So let's see what we have. And again, this one, we can also change the wavetable position using another LFO. This time we can use this random LFO here. 
Next, let's move over to the noise. So you have two different noise sources and you have the standard kind of noise colors, but then you also have like a huge slew of really crazy sounding noises. And similarly, the noise appears in the routing section as well. So for example, we can route noise one into our output here and then bring it up. You can hear now standard white noise, but we have these crazy noises as well. So let's pick this rain roof. So we can also make the noise appear as a short burst at the beginning by setting a different envelope to control its volume. So I'm gonna set the volume to zero and then let's pick another spare envelope. So out of the nine slots here, each one of these can either be an LFO or an envelope. So you have effectively nine different LFOs or envelopes that you can combine. So I'm gonna use envelope seven here since it's not assigned to anything. I'm gonna assign that to the volume of the noise and then bring up that contribution here. So then we can do like a very short burst. I'm gonna bring the sustain down, just a bit of decay. So we're just getting a short little noise burst at the beginning here. So let me go to the routing. Let's add a filter now. So there's a bunch of different filter kinds. Let's pick this Groyan one and it appears down here. So for example, maybe we can route oscillator two into the filter and then that to the output. And maybe let's assign the same envelope we did for the noise. We can assign that to the filter as well here. And maybe let's bring oscillator to an octave higher. And bring down its volume. So, so far we've been playing with these three insert effects here. And obviously there's a bunch of different ones that we can add. Uh, frequency shifters, distortion, etc. Actually, let's try a distortion just for fun. So I'm gonna route the distortion before the uh, filter here. So I'm gonna route oscillator two through the distortion and then through the filter. So we're gonna distort the sound and then kind of tame it with the filter. And there's a different distortion types as well. And then finally here, you'll notice that the routing stage at the end here, you have stereo effects, which you have three of them that get run through the audio signal. Right now we're running into here and then it goes through X, Y, and Z. And obviously you can change the routing here so you can make it go parallel and serial or you can make them all kind of separate. Uh, so let's run them all serially like we did at the beginning. And then up here, you can see XYZ is reflected up here. So you can pick a bunch of different effects. And here you have more kind of standard effects like flanger, phaser, reverbs, and delays and stuff like that. So maybe let's check out the delay. Let's synchronize them. So what's unique about this delay is that when you set it to synchronize to time divisions, you can actually define the separate times here for the slider separately and you can be very kind of specific. So now we can kind of modulate this. So now we can assign LFO5 to control the position inside this grid of specific timings I had for the delay here. So let's see what that sounds like. And then maybe we can synchronize this as well. That's kind of an interesting sound. So maybe let's add the reverb. Let's see what that sounds like. So what's cool here is that all the effect parameters are modulatable via the modulation sources here. So you can almost think of them as part of the synthesis engine. And that's the advantage of having an effect engine inside the synth itself versus an effect outside like a standard plug in in your DAW is that you can actually control it using all these parameters as well. So for example, here I've assigned LFO 8 to control the size of the reverb. So of course now we can go back and change the wavetable we used while keeping all the different modulation intact.
All right, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Maybe let's record a little groove with this, see what it sounds like in context. Quantize that. Just gonna loop it over. Let's add a 606 drum kit. Chord a little groove there. Spice it up a little bit. So yeah, hopefully that was fun to watch. I'm gonna probably do more videos like this where I'm just kind of experimenting and trying to make patches while I'm trying to learn the synth. So the manual hasn't been released yet at the time of making of this video. So a lot of what I'm going off of is just the intuition of the interface. So if I get something wrong, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next.